So far, I've been using the analogy of a staircase uh, such as this and a person moving, sitting on the staircase or standing on the staircase and moving from step to step and this notion of a, a clock which is ticking away. Uh, but now uh, I'd like to make concrete uh, three things. The first one is uh, what are the steps? And what these steps are in uh, mathematical terminology is a set of states. Uh, this is the set of states that the stochastic process can be in. And when we say the person is moving from uh, step to step, what we have really is the stochastic process is moving from state to state. And uh, states are either drawn, uh, uh, well, they don't draw them as steps. Typically, we draw them in the, no in the form of circles, such as this. And then, just like a person could go from step, let's say, step three to step four, they might go from state three to state four like that, or they could go from state four to state six. This is like going from st step four to step six, etc. So the the transitions between the states, which are always directed, like this, uh, form a, a state diagram, and this is one way to represent the state. Uh, states of a stochastic process and we can also have self loops where the process continues to remain in the same state. Now just as with in, in the example the person went up or down with some probability for example they went up on, on heads and down on tails with probability 0 0.5 each in the same way we can generalize this to say that uh, the stochastic process goes from, let's say, from state 4 to state 6 with the probability 0 0.2. It goes from state 4 to state 3, the probability 0 0.2. And that means that the remainder of the probability is going to be 0 0.6 in the self-loop because uh, at every uh, transition point, we're going to have to uh, be somewhere in the state diagram. Okay, so steps are states. The second thing is time. So over here, uh, we are using a clock, which is ticking once per second. Uh, but time can be discrete, such as this, which has time steps, or it can be continuous. So time can be discrete or continuous. But we have the same notion of time in both cases. The time is when the state stochastic process goes from state to state. And the third thing is, who is the person? who? is the person or what is the person and there is no actual person of course but what we have really is a sequence of states being assumed by the stochastic process over time so what we have is a stochastic process is in state 3 then state 4 and then state 6 and then from 6 perhaps it goes to four, uh, 5 again I don't know but it just goes in some fashion so there is no person as such. It's just that the stochastic process assumes a trajectory of states. And as we discussed earlier, a trajectory, which is a sequence of states, is very important because this sequence of states is actually not fully known. If you look at time on this axis, and over here is the state, What's going on is that we have some path between the states that is known until some time, which is now. And then the future of this evolution is, is unknown. We don't know what the future is going to look like. There are different possibilities of states, and a distribution among these possible states is, in fact, the random variable's value at that point in time. In other words, random variable takes on one of these different states with a distribution given by uh, the, the, uh, the distribution of that random variable. So if the time now is, in, if it's time now is i, the next time plus i plus 1, the next time plus i plus 2, then the distribution over these possible values is basically x i plus 2. This is going to be x uh, i plus 1 and, and so on. So uh, this uh, trajectory of the past, which is known, is also called the sample path. Now, uh, the concept that's quite important here is that 
the past sample path is known, but if you were to rerun the uh, stochastic process multiple times, then it might resume different sample paths. So let's take an example over here. So here is a, here is a, the, a stochastic process over time, and this is state again. And the first time you run it, the, the process goes something like this. And the second time you run it, it may go somewhere else. It may go up like that. It may go jump around. We don't really know exactly what it's going to be, what it's going to be doing, but it has some path. And at the end of certain number of steps, you can tell what the sample path is. And so the actual path chosen is random, right? However, uh, for any specific path, the sequence of states chosen is very is known. It's, de de it's deterministic. And uh, for both of these, if you look to the future, then we can only have some estimates or of, of probabilities of what states they're going to have in the future. Okay. So when we uh, r uh, do any kind of simulation then you can think of the simulation as being a stochastic process and that uh, this each state corresponds to the set of state variables uh, that belong to the simulation. So for example, if you're simulating a discrete event system, then you could have uh, the state being the values taken by all the variables inside the simulator. And each time you run the simulation, you're going to get different sets of state variables being taking on different values in time. However, one would assume, one would hope that the statistics computed across these different runs of the simulation are somewhat stable. And when we talk about simulations uh, in a different part of the course, we will uh, make this much more precise as to what uh, stability of statistics means with regard to simulation. But for now, uh, all you do, all you need to remember is that the uh, that a simulation is a particular kind of stochastic process.